Okay, everyone. Uh, hello, this is a quick lesson on ocean currents and uh, the way that they impact on temperature. Uh, they help to stabilize temperature around the world. Uh, so let's get to it. Um, so we'll set up our map here. I'm going to add a couple of layers. Um, just bear with me while we do that. So I'm in water. And I'm going to add some layers to my map. So we're going to add the ocean surface currents and we're going to open the sea surface temperatures in winter. Okay, so I click done. And now you can see we've layered these things on our map. Now the reason why I went with winter was because this information is based on uh, the northern hemisphere. So when it's their winter, it's our summer. So we're actually looking at conditions in summer as we speak right now. now you can see that we've got some different colors down here. We've got this purple color indicating very cold and slightly warmer, slightly warmer still, getting a bit warmer. And when we get into the red, we're getting into very comfortable temperatures. Um, we'll have a look in a minute at what those sort of temperatures are exactly. All right. Um, so you're looking at this map here and you can see that uh, we've got the ocean currents on here. We marked these out earlier on our map. Okay. And I'm just going to mark in the location in the South, the South Pacific for the ocean um, gyre. Okay. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so what I'll do is, I'm just going to put in uh, some lines here. We'll start, let's start at New Zealand. It's a lovely little country. So let's imagine that we're here and we're a bit of wood. And we might end up heading south and to the east, following this trajectory. Okay. What will happen is we get to South America and we have two options. The water can either move down around the bottom of it, call this the Tierra del Fuego, the land of fire, lots of volcanoes here, or it can move up the coast, okay, up this way. Much of the water does, and you'll notice that it's warming up as it moves, as it heads towards the equator. Okay, So we head up in this direction, and you'll notice that the water has now warmed up. So we've got warm ocean temperatures, and we head across this way towards Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and we hit the coast here in Australia at the Great Barrier Reef. Before the water then turns, heads south and heads back to New Zealand. Okay, so you can see that the the oh, never mind, ignore that. That the tent that the uh, currents are doing a circle in these gyres, and the same thing's happening internally. Okay, doing a circle here as well. And that's how we ended up with our arrows. So we have one here making a an anti-clockwise circle. You'll notice this is anti-clockwise. But if we look at this one up here, you'll see the arrows are going uh, clockwise. Okay. So the oceans circulate in the opposite direction in the northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere. Okay. Over here you can see anti-clockwise heading around this way. Okay. All right, um, now what this means ultimately is that we're sh constantly shifting water from the cold areas up and into the warm areas where the sun's energy warms it up, okay? This is the constant cycle, it's happening all the time. So we're essentially seeing um, a, a lack of energy move up into these warmer energy okay, areas and we're seeing warm water move from the equator down to the poles. So water is cooling here and water is warming up here. So we see the energy being moved from the uh, where we have a surplus of energy to a deficit of energy down here. And this is occurring in this location as well. All right. It's also occurring up here. You have to ignore my lines, okay? And it's also happening over here, where we see these large gyres. So we have one gyre here, one gyre there, a gyre, a gyre, there goes a gyre. Gyres over here as well, okay? 
Although this one over on the right side is the same as this one, they're the same thing. This is the way that water moves temperature between the two locations and it keeps the Earth's temperature, at least in the water, very, very stable. Now we'll go and have a quick look. This is a lovely website called Windy and we can see it in action. Okay, so if I zoom out, all right, looking at the same area, you can see we've got our temperatures. Okay, red meaning hot. And down here at the poles, very cold. Okay, if I click here, you can see that it's zero degrees centigrade at this location. All right, and look at the detail in these arrows. This is showing the movement of oceans. As I said, some of that water gets through here, okay, but some of it then gets trapped here in South America and heads north, and we'll zoom in and have a look at that in a minute. Okay, so if you're a, if you're a, a ship and you're wanting to get around quickly around the world, you want to get into these areas of high speed current, all right, all the way along here. So when they have the around the world uh, ocean races, they love to get into this current here. All right. It's also where the high winds are. Okay, strong winds are driving these currents. Okay, so they call that the Roaring Forties. We see air circulation moving along this way. Okay, let's zoom in. So we can now have a bit of a closer look in here. All right. You can see water moving in this way. Temperature is nine degrees, very cold. Okay, here it's 10 degrees, it's now one degree warmer. As the ocean hits, hits South America and begins to move further, look at the difference in the temperature between here, 13, it's five degrees difference. Okay, so what's happening here is that cold water is hitting warm water. And that causes the, ocean, causes the ocean to stir up and it brings sediment to the surface. When that sediment comes to the surface, then phytoplankton can begin to grow because it's got nutrients. That's, that sediment has got nutrients in it. So phytoplankton grows. Um, you have your zooplankton that are attracted to this area because that's where the phytoplankton are. And then because the zooplankton are there, you get the little uh, fish that come along and they eat the zooplankton. Then the, because all the little fish are there, the bigger fish come in and they eat the little fish. And we work our way up the chain till we get lots of sharks and so forth in this sort of, uh, these regions. So we consider this to be a hotspot, okay, of biodiversity, all right, right in here, okay. So from there, you can see here, we look at our arrows. The water's generally moving up in this direction, slowly meandering its way out until it gets up into here. You can see really strong currents along here. This is just south of the equator, okay? And there we go. So we have strong currents moving across here, all the way across there. It's really warm temperatures. It's a temperature here. It's, the water is 26 degrees Celsius. The hot spot looks like it's here. It's at 28 and this is even warmer, this looks like. If I can get it to work. Let's try somewhere over here. There you go, 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. So this becomes a highway for ships. Okay, they come out of the Panama Canal right there and they sail their way through here. They're catching this current through the uh, Galapagos Islands and heading out this way. Okay. From here, the water continues to head in, an, a, in a westerly direction, gets moved around. It's, 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 what's happening here is that it's, it's hitting this group of islands and being forced to like rebound and back up. And so we get all this sort of weird sort of movements around with the ocean current. But eventually it sorts itself out and you can see that the water ends up making its way down here. This is in summer. Okay. Does, it's doing a bit of a U-turn. By the way, what you're looking at is conditions right now, okay? So this is live. Zoom in, let's have a look where we are while we're at it. So you can see that we've got the East Australian current coming down, doing a U-turn, heading back up out to sea. 
and then causing this eddy to form. Okay. On a really, uh, what's the temperature here? So uh, we've got 26 degrees temperature. That's not what we've got at the moment where we are, it's 21. So if that was to shift further down, we would have really warm ocean temperatures. Okay. So water continues to meander around. Okay, some of it comes up around the corner here, makes its way down, and eventually makes its way down into these cooler waters, bringing the heat with it. Okay, now that could happen by this route. If we follow the arrows, could come down through here, around there, through here, eventually heading south. Okay, so no matter which way it moves, it's heading to the south. And this is how energy is transferred, and this is um, why it's important that um, these global ocean currents continue to operate. So what do you think would happen if these ocean currents stopped? Okay. I can tell you what would happen. If ocean currents stopped, this would get warmer and warmer and warmer. And this would get cooler and cooler and cooler. Okay. If that was to happen, we would see parts of New Zealand go into an ice age. All right. And yet parts of northern Australia, okay, well, anywhere near the equator would just get baked. Okay. May as well be in an oven. We're talking temperatures 60, 70 degrees plus. If the ocean currents stopped working. And just imagine for a moment how that would impact on civilizations. You know, especially those civilizations that are either in the cold zone or in the hot zone. Think about all those cities. Japan, Korea, Northern China, much of the east coast of Canada and America and of course Europe, this area in here, would go into a deep freeze, okay? That's the end of our lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in class.